Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the effects of earthquakes, but first I want to do a quick review of um, being able to, how we predict earthquakes or how predictable earth, earthquakes are. So here are the three theories um, that we looked at, that earthquakes are pe just periodic, that they're time predictable, which is the larger the earthquake, the longer the wait until the next one, or the shorter the earthquake, or the, the smaller the earthquake, the shorter the wait or slip predictable, and that was looking at the longer you have to wait means there's going to be a bigger earthquake, okay? Or if you have a short amount of wait time, it's going to be a small earthquake. And what we found in the lab, or you should have found out, is, is none of those really apply. Our data really shows that um, our wait times between earthquakes are variable, okay? So they change, um, and then at the same time, the slip distance, or how quote unquote big the earthquake is, that's variable as well. Okay, so you end up with these, um, our points are, are not on a set line. Okay, we don't have a completely a linear trend. Okay, um, so from that what we can say is, you know, our data didn't really support any of the hypothesis. And in the end what that means, it's very difficult to predict when the next earthquake will be. Um, to our ability now, we have no way to really say that um, we should have an earthquake on in one month compared to any other month. Um, so we're just not there yet with our um, knowledge of, of earthquakes. Okay, so let's move on to effects of earthquakes. So we measure earthquakes in a few different ways, okay? The modified Mercalli intensity scale is one way, one way, and it's, it's qualitative, it's subjective. It's been around for a while, um, and because what it does is it doesn't really look at anything numerical. It looks purely at the damage that's done by the earthquake. Okay, it's done in, shown in Roman numerals, and um, the damage is obviously going to be affected by the amount of energy, how far it, it, you are from the earthquake, how deep the earthquake is, the number of people that live there, and the local geology. Those are important because if you think about this, um, if you've got no buildings around to show damage, that's going to be a low score on the Mercalli intensity scale. Um, so it's not directly measuring the earthquake itself. We're looking at, you know, the, the number of buildings that are around and the damage that's actually done. The type of construction is going to play a role too, too, because if you have poorly constructed buildings, they're not going to be able to survive as well. Um, and if they fall down, you're going to have a higher ranking on the Mercalli intensity scale. And the, the duration of shaking as well. Okay, so you know, I'm not going to go through all of these, but it basically, if you look at the low end and the high end, number one is not felt except by very few under especially favorable circumstances. So no one really feels the earthquake unless you're in a quiet room with no other noises um, versus up to 12 is where it's uh, very severe damage. People saw waves on the ground. Objects were thrown up into the air. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, but it's all looking at damage. Okay, This was from a, an earthquake in uh, April 16th. Um, down in South America, and uh, this was put together by um, this research institute. But you can see here, using the Mercalli intensity scale, they color code it so you get an idea of, um, you know, the amount of shaking. Now, to, to relate this to the Richter scale, this was a 7.8 earthquake, um, but you can see right in this area you have, you know, severe to violent levels of, of, um, of damage from this earthquake. And you can see how it radiates out. Um, the further you get away from the focus or the epicenter. All right, the other way we can look at earthquakes is through the Richter scale, which most people have heard of before. It's quantitative, so it, it looks at the amplitude, um, the energy with the earthquake, um, and the magnitude associated with um, the, those energy waves to determine or to assign a qualitative number. Amplitude, distance, total energy, um, now here's the, the idea. You guys have heard of uh, an 8 on the Richter scale or a 9 on the Richter scale. Each number increase is 10 times the increase in wave amplitude. Okay, So every time you go up a number, it's increasing by tenfold. I'll do a sample problem here in a little bit that, um, that'll kind of demonstrate what that means. Each number you go up is 30 times an increase in energy. Okay, So you can see it's, there's a big, big difference between a 5 and a 6. And a big difference, a much much larger difference between a five and a seven. Um, so here's showing that same earthquake right up here um, in Ecuador, um, but it was a seven point eight. Okay, so um, 
you know, if you want to pause and read this, it basically saying these are earthquakes that were magnitude 8 or larger, or great earthquakes. And you can see here this is happening along that subduction zone, um, this convergent um, oceanic continental convergent boundary um, where the, ocean, uh, the Nazca plate here is subducting underneath um, South America. And it's causing all these earthquakes. So you can see the uh, major ones, but again, looking at the Richter scale. Um, this one is showing the size um, missity along this, the same thing. The interesting thing about this one, I think, is that there's that 7.8, but you can see the color here is showing the depth, the depth. Um, so you can see red is at your deeper, a deep earthquake versus blues and purples are shallow. And this is interesting because we know that the oceanic plate is subducting underneath South America. So you can almost get a three-dimensional view here of these are near the surface. And these earthquakes, you can see, these are happening deep under the earth as that oceanic plate subducts underneath South America. Um, so you can kind of see the going from deep up to shallow um, where those earthquakes are happening. All right, here's a sample problem like I was talking about for magnitude. So if LA experienced a magnitude 8 earthquake, how does that compare with an earthquake of a magnitude 5 that occurred in Alaska? So here's the deal. is from 5 to 8. Every time you go from 8 down to 5, 8 to 7 to 6 to 5, you're going down three times. It's 10 times 10 times 10. So that means that that LA earthquake was a thousand times greater amplitude. Okay. So it's not 10 plus 10 plus 10. It's not 30 times. It's 10 times 10 times 10, a thousand times greater. Okay, so there's a huge difference between a, a 5 and an 8. If you looked at the energy, it's 30 times 30 times 30. So 27,000 times more energy for a Richter scale 8 earthquake versus a 5. All right, so let's look at some effects. Ground shaking and, and uh, failure of buildings. Here's an important point. Soft soils amplify ground shaking. So the softer, less consolidated soil you have, the more shaking you're going to have. So this is, I believe, San Francisco. Um, and uh, I'll show you another picture here why. But this is soil that is um, soft, quote unquote. Um, so it amplifies the shaking. Um, and you can see the modified Mercalli scale here. Okay, and that's what this picture is showing here. Bedrock. Um, is not going to amplify, um, but as you get out to this poorly consolidated sediments and mud, water saturated, the seismic wave, the amplitude is going to increase, um, and you're going to have more damage in those locations. Okay, so those soft, unsorted um, soils are going to um, make earthquakes seem worse. Here's the idea. So this right here was built on a landfill, okay, which is not well sorted, not well consolidated uh, material and then over here Fort Mason this was um, built on bedrock so you can see the difference um, this was the same earthquake um, but just the fact that this was on those soft soils amplified um, the earthquake all right uh, so here's an idea this is an example of that this is through a process called liquefaction but this is like sandy material and if there's moisture present when that earth the earth shakes um, it kind of loosens the pore spaces and, al and allows stuff to um, sink down into the earth. Uh, here's a picture showing, again, the, the damage associated, which is pretty impressive from an earthquake. All right, another effect of earthquakes are fires. The San Francisco earthquake of 1906, um, it was a bad earthquake, but as it says up here, 90% of the total destruction was a result of the fires from afterwards. So that's a real concern, especially in underdeveloped um, countries. Tsunamis are another effect of earthquakes. So uh, 2004 uh, tsunami in um, the Southeast Asia claimed over um, 200,000 lives. So it was very damaging. So this image is showing how, how these really happen. In, in a lot of cases, is you can see the plate subducting here. And when that tension is released, the, the land snaps up and it creates this wave of water that as the, the sh um, it gets more and more shallow, that forces the wave of the energy upward. Okay, so again, you got this convergent boundary right here, subducting plate, snaps back and then creates a, a tsunami. Here's a picture showing that idea, is that this would be maybe showing it as a um, um, reverse fault. So this one's shooting upward and it creates that upward wave. So here's the, a picture showing um, down in Malaysia where this happened. Here's the before picture and there's the after. So you can clearly see the, the devastation and why so many lives were lost. 
Um, so how do you know if a tsunami is coming? Okay. Um, if, there's, if you're by an ocean okay, and an earthquake happens, that should be a natural clue to you to, to take cover. Okay. A no noticeable fall or rise in the water level. Okay, and we'll show you a picture of that in a minute. A tsunami is a series of waves, and the first wave may not be the most dangerous. So um, that's something always to consider. So here's a picture. This was from that uh, Malaysian uh, tsunami. But um, you can see here, the water used to be way up here, and then the water receded. It went way out. And um, these people were curious to you know, see, well, what the heck's going on? And they walked down here. and But then, um, unfortunately, I'm sure all these people lost their lives, unfortunately, because you can see the tsunami coming in. So if the water ever recedes away from land, um, you know, don't, don't, you know, that should be a definite sign to you to, to get the heck out of there and head for higher ground. Uh, here's a little video I'm going to show just a little bit of this. It's from the Japanese tsunami. Get out of that. All right, so you can see here the, the sirens have gone out. And you can see here, you can see the mud here because the water has receded out. And you can see these boats, I think, are actually resting on land. And, um, you know, Japan is very well prepared for tsunamis. I'm going to fast forward here to where you can really see the tsunami start to come in. So look at the water level now, and then we'll look at it now. So you can see here, this is the point where it breaches their safety wall. Um, and, and again, that initial wall of a tsunami, so it is a wall of water, but then it, it's a huge, tremendous amount of water involved with the tsunami. Okay, so it's it's not maybe like you think of the movies of this giant surfer's wave. Um, that may be initially the case, but the real damage comes from the, that large mass of water. All right, let's get out of that and continue on here. Okay, so do we need to worry about major earthquake in Illinois, where we are? Um, in southern Illinois, yes. Not so much in northern Illinois, but... Illinois in general does have regions that are at risk, and that's because of this New Madrid Fault. Southern Illinois is relatively close to this Madrid, New Madrid Fault, so St. Louis area down here. Um, you know, there is potential risk for a serious earthquake in, in those locations. Obviously, you can see where the San Andreas Fault and the, the two plates are colliding with each other. That there's a risk over there as well. Okay, um, if you have any questions, be sure you um, stop me in class or shoot me an email.